everybody calls me Banky, that's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man. I appreciate the love. I appreciate the support. Um, We on the road to 100K, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Who you with? Let's go. We out here. We out here pumping the stories, man. This good energy, this positive good energy, man. And today, man, I just wanted to touch briefly on the, the fact that, you know, because I be getting these calls from prison, I, I keep in touch with all my comrades. Salute to all them. I hope they get their liberation soon. Um, but I be getting a lot of comments and uh, stuff asked me about people in prison, man, and what, how the COs carry. And, you know, out here on the street, for decades and decades, it's been a big thing with police brutality. And they always talk about that. And you hear that and you get the protests and this, that, and the third when, you know, they kill people out here, you know, unjustly or whatnot. But... What they don't talk about a lot is CO's brutality. And it goes on just as much. It occurs just as often. But it's less talked about because of the situation that we isolated, that we locked up, and people is not caring about us as much as out here or people are not knowing what's going on in there. But, man, let me tell you, over the decades and over the years, I've seen some mean, mean police brutality, man where these people just abuse their authority on a regular basis, you know, with no, no consequences, no nothing. I've seen and heard of police, you know, actually taking people's lives, man, killing them, you know, and beating them to death in cells and, and somehow getting away with it, justifying it, you know, don't even losing time off of work, man. It's, it's just crazy, you know, that they don't even, you know, be held responsible for what they do. And I know a lot of times people look at it like, well, dudes is locked up and they did something wrong. They broke the law. They did this. They did that. But at the end of the day, they still human beings. They still deserve to be treated like human beings. You know, everybody make a mistake. Everybody mess up. Everybody do something that they regret. Everybody do things that set them back. But at the end of the day, we all human and we should be treated as such. And just because you locked up does not give your life any less value. You know, in, in my eyes anyway. But I've seen some things, man. I've been through some things myself. You know, once them police get you, or them COs, we call them police because that's what they act like. It's the same thing. But once they get you in a submissive position, or you have handcuffs on, or they got you, or you at their mercy, man, they take cold advantage of you. They take cold advantage of you. And this is why dudes respond the way they respond this is why dudes act the way they act when you get when you, when you heard something about a co getting stabbed in prison or getting killed in prison it make the news it always make the news it's the first thing on the news when you see it co got stabbed at such and such institution or co got killed at such and such institution or inmates attack co's but you never heard the opposite because they keep that in-house they keep that closed in they don't want that to get out to the public and for the most part, they feel like they can get away with it, and they usually do, you know. And um, I've seen some things, man. I've seen a lot of things. Uh, first thing come to my mind, I remember when we had the ride on Greensville. Um, it was in the mid-'90s. I want to say 97, maybe 96, 97, 95, somewhere up in that area, but... I can remember that riot, man. It was crazy. It was mad crazy. You know, it started off that morning. And it didn't end till, you know, later on, like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. It was crazy. You know, they had brought the National Guards in there. They had helicopters. They had dogs. And they was doing all this foolishness. But I remember, I, I think I said something about this in one of my stories. I remember being back in the block they had got us back in the block got me back in the block everybody was being brought in individually so i remember they having us back in the block and i can remember you know as they was ushering us in dudes had on handcuffs and they was waiting to put you in your cell or whatnot and i can remember being waiting to put in my cell and this young dude man he couldn't have been no more than like 18 19 years old he was 
arguing with the, one of these sizes that was always one of the worst sizes on there. You get them, them old, you know, boot licking, uh, Uncle Tom, Jeffro Bodine, tap dancing, COs, man, that just feel like that they everything and in actuality they nothing. You know, without this job, they would be even less than that. But they try to take advantage of you. They try to carry you. They try to talk to you like you, you weak and you soft or you just, just you know, less than human, subhuman. And you get him like that. And he was one of them. And I can remember the dude was joking him because he was a big country farmer looking dude anyway. So I remember the young dude, he young. So, you know, he still got a lot of kid in him, even though he locked up. So I remember he was joking him the way he looked and the way he was dressed. But he got on handcuffs. You see what I'm saying? And I got on handcuffs, and there's about two or three of us, and we waiting to go on one side. He, he has to go on the other side, so they trying to determine where we go. And he keep joking the CO because the sergeant, because the sergeant had said something to him. So I remember the sergeant, man, just getting so mad and getting so embarrassed that he walked up behind him and snatched him by his handcuffs. And when he snatched him by his handcuffs, he started pulling him out to the salad port. So he was like, man, what you doing, what you doing? So he dragged him out to the salad port. In the, into the um into the uh foyer and we could see him so we turn around and we look in the ones the ones that's right there and man he got that little young boy which won't no more than about five eight maybe 130 pounds and this sergeant that i'm speaking of in particular he at least six three six four two sixty two seventy and he grabbed that little young dude and pulled him out there where he thought he couldn't be seen and he put his hand up under his arm which is handcuffed so he come up from up under here and grab him by the back of the neck and reach around the front and grab him by the front of his neck and he picked him up and he was just choking him and I mean he literally was off his feet you know about this much off his feet and he just choking the man he says is it funny now funny huh you playing with me you keep playing with me and he was literally choking the life out of this little dude man he was gonna kill this dude man he was literally gonna choke him to death and you know, we hollering and screaming like, man, what you doing, man? What you doing to him? And he was like he was in a zone. He just choking the little young dude. And then some other COs came out, and they seen it, and they was like, yo, yo. And then um the captain came out. So it was the captain. I gave him kudos, too. The captain came out, and when he came out, he wasn't just talking. He ran over there and grabbed him and pushed him away. And the little boy fell down, man, and he was foaming all at the mouth and just shaking and stuff. He was like, what you doing, man? What are you doing? So he like, man, I, I, he playing with me. I told him, he said, man, get out of here. Go, 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 go to the uh, watch command office. Go to the watch command office. So he sent him to the watch command office. So by this time, they all noticing that there's a couple of us looking and we can see it too. So now they usher us in. Get them in the building. Get them in their block. Go ahead and take them where they supposed to go. But we have already, we already seen it. You know, we already seen it. But the thing about it with him is, I think he ended up getting busted down from a sergeant back to an officer. But for something like that, man, you're supposed to lose your job. You're supposed to lose your job. It ain't no such thing as justifying that by just knocking him down or pay. He still get a job. He still get paid. He still get the chance and the opportunity to come in here and abuse other inmates and abuse other convicts. It's crazy. And that's how they carried in there. That's how they carried in there. So you get people... They, they be calling home and they be, they, you know, that's why a lot of people just locked up don't like to tell their people what's going on. They don't like to tell them because they don't like to have them worry. They don't like to, you know, have them, you know, sitting at home wondering what's going on with them. Is they all right or whatnot because they put themselves in this position. We put ourselves in this position. So somehow when we get in there, man, we take it upon ourselves to say, man, I, you know, I've already caused my family this much pain. I don't want to cause them no more. I don't want to cause them worryation. I don't want to cause them to be out there and not be able to enjoy their life because they worrying about me. But in actuality, man, dudes in there be going through it, man. They be going through it because you got to navigate your way through surviving, you know, this new environment with all the viciousness that goes on amongst each other, let alone the viciousness that's coming at you from these COs which you have no recourse for. you. It ain't nothing you can do about it because at the end of the day, even when they wrong, they're going to be right because they're going to make themselves right because they're going to make the paperwork like they're right. They're going to make everything that look like they ain't doing nothing because their job security is number one. And they always have each other back. They always going to stand behind each other even when they see something wrong. And that's what I used to say about all of them. I used to say, even when you have a CO that appears to be okay, you know what I'm saying? 
I always look at them at the, with the same light, though, because even if you okay, are you going to say something when you see something wrong? Or are you going to stand behind your officer? You see what I'm saying? And most of the time, they're going to stand behind their officer. So if you're going to stand behind your officer, even though you're standing behind them knowing what they're doing, then I can't never look at you as if you're not a part of the system. You're a part of the system. You know what I'm saying? You're a part of the system. You know, because if you don't speak up for injustice when you see it, then you're a part of the system. And then you know after you've been there for a while that you're working for a corrupt system. You're working for a vicious system that, that, that mistreat people, abuse people, and get away with it and go home every day. And then they supposed to be coming in here to protect us. But at the same time, we need protection from them. But then when we strike back at them, then it's always our fault. We always label the bad guy. We always say, oh, well, that's what he did. Oh, yeah, that's why he locked up. He need to stay locked up. Woo, woo, woo. But people don't know what you have to deal with when you're in there, when you're dealing with these police. These police come in there with attitudes. They come in there with, with chips on their shoulder. Most of them been nerds all their life or they done went through it and been bullied and now they get a chance to take that out on you and you become the, the scapegoat you become you know the, the dot board where they can just throw all of their viciousness throw all of their pain throw all of their anger at you and you just have to take it you see what i'm saying and a lot of dudes when they stand up for themselves they you know they get labeled as this and that and that's how they get end up staying in prison so long because they fight back and even when you fight back, you wrong. When you fight back, you get a charge. When you fight back, you go into court and get more time. When you fight back, you know, <laughs> it's a no-win situation. It's a no-win situation. It's just like when you see these police out here jumping on these dudes on the street. When you see all these videos, when they beating them down and they tell them, stop resisting, stop resisting. Those dudes that you see out here, that you see them police doing that too, they be beating them people down and then they get them charges and say that they was resisting or fighting an officer or assault upon an officer. How can you assault somebody that's attacking you? How can you assault somebody that's attacking you by defending yourself? If you come out victorious or if you come out uh, 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 putting more damage on them than they put on you, then how are you still wrong when they attack you first? No one in their right mind is just going to lay down there and just be beat and brutalized. You know, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, but, you know, it happens, you know, and that's what they do in there. They do the same, use the same philosophy to stop resisting, or they'll say, oh, well, he fighting back, so this is what happened to him. Man, you get dudes, man, shh. Wallace Ridge, oh, my God, I've told y'all about that. Worst worst prison I've ever been, been to in 33 years, by far, by far, and they was brutalizing dudes up there, killing dudes. Beating dudes to death on a regular basis and getting away with it up there. Getting away with it up there. I know they got bodies up under their belt up there by COs. See what I'm saying? But the first time an inmate attack one of them, it makes the news. It makes the news. Why? Because they decided to fight back. Because they got fed up. Because they got tired of the mistreatment. Because they figured like, well, okay, if I'm going to be beaten, if I'm going to be brutalized, then I'm going to get mines in too. I'm going to get mines in too. But that's going to make the news. That's going to get you back in somebody else's courtroom and get you some more time. But when they do it to you, you just got to sit there and lick your wounds and take it. You know, take it. I've seen things at Wallace Ridge even when I was up there. And I got up there, you know, after it had already been up for a decade or better. You see what I'm saying? And within that decade, man, they had bodies up in there. But I seen them do things to dudes, man, that was just uh, unspeakable, you know. I've seen them beat dudes, you know, with handcuffs on in the salad port. I've seen them slam dudes down on their face with handcuffs behind them, busting their face open, knocking their teeth out. These things is irreplaceable, man. Hey, can you, you know, you can get some new teeth, but they ain't your teeth. All because a, a, a police wanted to take advantage of you and he knew that he could and he knew he won't be punished for. This is the things that's happening in there. And a lot of times dudes call home and they tell their people these things and it's hard for them to believe because in the mind of society, y'all have been programmed to believe that this is professional uh, job, that these people are professional here, that they currently professionally and we're whining because we locked up. Nah, that's not always the case, man. That's not always the case. If your people call home and they tell you what's going on and they ask for your help, man, please listen to them. Please 
you know, make them calls, call up there because it's different when they know that they you got somebody on the on the outside that's concerned about your well being. When they know that, they move a little bit more cautiously because they don't know who you may reach or who you may reach out to, which may bring that, you know, that 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 noise to that institution. They don't want that. They don't want the spotlight on them. They don't want the, the, the complaints. They don't want the calls because then they got to justify what they're doing. But as long as they don't get them calls they ain't, they, and they ain't got to hide nothing and they can just hide it within the infrastructure of that system, oh, man, they be brutalizing up there, man. They be brutal. I have not been on their institution where them officers have not been or they didn't have a certain amount of officers or a set of officers that got away with anything they wanted to get away with. And normally, like I say, it's always when you're in a submissive position. They'll talk to you at first, but when they get them cuffs on you, once they get them cuffs on you and they know that they can do what they want to do to you, that's when it all goes down because they cowards. At the end of the day, they cowards, you know, and they can't stand on their own two feet. They cannot. They need a group of people with nice sticks and, and riot shields and shock shields and dogs and, you know, and, 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 and helmets and, 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 and impenetrable vests and all of that. You got 12, 15 of them jumping on one man. One man. See what I'm saying? And all of them getting their licks in and beating you down and hollering, you know what I'm saying? Hold up, put the cuffs on and do this and do that. And dog chewing on your leg and all. Man, it's crazy. It's just super crazy. Yeah, it's super crazy, man. It goes down in there, though. And, and, and like I say, the public is the only people that can change that. You know what I'm saying? Being out here, making your voice known, showing concern for your loved ones, asking questions, making phone calls, making sure they safe. Trust me, it, it helps. It helps a lot. Way more than people understand. It helps a lot because it puts them on notice that somebody care about you. And when they think don't nobody care about you, that's when they carry you. That's when they target you. That's when they try to drag you because they're always trying to set examples. They're always trying to, you know, impose their will on you. They're always trying to let you know they're, they're in charge and they, you know what I'm saying, they running things. And when they can do that by force because they got numbers, you know, and when they can do that by force, that's what they do. That's what they do. And I, I, like I say, I've seen some things. I've been through some things. I've been through some things. I've had dogs sick on me. I've been shocked by electrical uh, shields. I done been hit with nice sticks. Uh, I done had to fight 10 and 15 police at one time. It goes down in there because that's what you have to live. That's the life you have to live when you're incarcerated, whether you like it or not. And they don't care nothing about how small you is, how old you is. I've seen them drag old people, 60, 65, 70 year old people, just snatch them and grab them up and, and manhandle them and stuff just because they can, you know, just because they can. And these people need to be held accountable, you know, and our people on the street, we need to be standing up for our people that's locked up. We need to make our voice known and let them know that they can't do anything they want to do just because they got a job and a title. You know, just because they got a job and a title, man. And uh, they do it, man. I remember I told y'all the story about 50. You know, and when you put your hands on the officer, when you do choose to fight back, when you do choose to stand up for yourself, they really try to brutalize you then. They really try to take advantage of you because they want to set the example for the rest of the institution. This ain't what you going to do. This ain't what we going for. You know, and 50, I told y'all about 50. 50 ain't no more than like 5'3", five, 5'4". You know, a little young cat was 19, and the police kept playing with him and smacked some food out of his hand. And 50 just snapped on him, lift him up and slammed him to the ground and started whooping him. You know, a whooping him. I mean, really giving him the business. And they was getting ready to shoot him and everything because we was on Sussex 2 where they shoot you. You see what I'm saying? And it just so happened that the lady in the booth was new, and she couldn't handle the gun. And she was doing a lot of uh, mishaps up there and shot the gun off up in the booth and all this and all that. So 50 ended up getting away from the situation. So now the situation has been diffused. So there's no need to do anything to him. So when they do come rushing in and bum rushing in and they go to his cell, they extract him out of his cell, he turn around and get cuffed up and they walk him out there in plain view in front of all of us. You know, and this is how they supposed to do because the situation is over. What has happened has already happened. You see what I'm saying? So what has happened has already happened. So now, what, why is you going to do anything to him? But that ain't what they did. They took him back to the cell. And when they got him back to the cell in segregation, they beat the man. 
they beat the man, they verbally abused the man, they broke off nightsticks telling him that they would shove it up his rectum, and they punished that little dude in the cell. And dudes back there in the jail can hear him getting beat in the cell, and they banging on the door, and they holler, get off that man, get off that man. This is a young kid who was just defending himself because he was made, you know, to look a fool in front of the rest of the, uh, his peers. You see what I'm saying? And, and he's a man, and he was standing up for his own rights. But they beat that man, they brutalized that man back there, man, and it was crazy. And that incident in particular, because so many people made noise in the jail, and so many people wrote complaints, that people lost their job behind that. You know what I'm saying? They lost their job behind that. But the crazy part about it is, the officer that he got to fighting with was a white dude. The officer who smacked this cup out of his hand, which the camera could clearly show that he was the aggressor and he was out of line, out of pocket. He was doing beyond his job, way beyond his job. And he the only one that didn't get fired. He is the only one that didn't get fired. All of the officers that stood up for him and went back there and brutalized their own kind was black officers and went back there and beat 50 who was black as well because of what he did to their fellow officers. And they all paid the price for it. They lost their job for it, you know, and the dude that was the originator, the white dude who smacked the cup out of his hand that he got to fight with, he's the only, he the only one that maintained his job. The only one. And the only reason those dudes lost their job because so many people complained about it that they knew that they was going to have some pushback. So they had to make somebody this, the, the, the sacrificial lamb. They had to show that they'll do this and do that. But it, in normal cases, that just would have been another average day. That they probably would have been sitting around and in their meetings in the morning, which they call mustard, and just laughing and joking about what they did to another inmate. Oh, yeah, he put his hands on such and such. Yeah, we punished him. We let him know we ain't going for that. That ain't going to happen no more. Yeah, they laugh about that type of stuff. They laugh about that stuff. That's why I always took the attitude that if you put your hands on me, you better hurt me because I'm definitely going to be trying to hurt you back because I already know the count. I, I know I got to get mine in right here, right now, because I know what they're going to try to do to me. You know what I'm saying? So what's what's the what's the point? If I'm gonna take a beating, I'm gonna get one back to the best of my ability. And God forbid, I hope I don't see you no more on the compound. Don't even let me back out because I'm not gonna be able to look at you and just walk by you knowing what you tried to do to me when I was in a submissive position. You know, but this is prison, man. This is a wild life. This is a crazy life. This is 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 insanity. And you know. I just want to bring some awareness to this man and let you know if you got somebody that's locked up, that's your loved ones, check on them. Check on them as much as you can. Check on them and listen to them. And listen to them. You know them better than anybody. Listen to them and understand what they're going through because they need that support. They need that love, man, and they need people to be out here, you know, worried about what's going on with them and making some noise when they're making some complaints because if not, it ain't no telling what's going on in there, and it ain't no telling what they what, what, what might be happening to them. But I just wanted to bring this to y'all. I wanted to bring this awareness. It is not just police brutality out here on the street. It's CO brutality up in them prisons. Every day, every institution, it goes on, and they get away with it, and we need to put a stop to it, man. So, uh, y'all, be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions. Check on your people, man. Salute to all my comrades that's locked up. Free Bo Billy, 48 years and count, insanity, pure insanity, and every other convict that's locked up, that's trying to fight for his liberation, man. Everybody deserves a second chance. Everybody mess up. Everybody can be redeemed, and everybody has value to their life, and we need not to forget that, man. Y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions. I'll be back at y'all in a minute. Y'all duck them hooks. Boom! They coming. They coming. They coming. Duck them hooks. Thank you, special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm gonna have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.